the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins as called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen.
from Romans chapter 5. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned, for sin indeed was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not counted where there is no law. Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sinning was not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass, for if many died through one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. And the free gift is not like the result of that one man's sin. For the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation, but the free gift following many trespasses brought justification. If, because of one man's trespass, death reigned through that one man, much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as one trespass led to condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all men. For as by the one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience the many will be made righteous. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand. he was hungry, and the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered them, or answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command His angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these I will give you if you fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and were ministering to him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things that is all and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God God, light of light, very God of very God, be not to not be made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things are made, who for our sin and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, 
and to lay at hand, and was crucified also for us on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come in with the glory to judge all the holy living and the dead, whose kingdom will I have no end. And I believe the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the Lord of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped the Lord of life, who is so of our prophets. And I believe one holy Christian and a church. I acknowledge the baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. <laughs>
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Again, I'm going to ask you a question. It's rather rhetorical, so you don't blurt it out. But I know the answer is yes. Have you ever wished that you could do something over? You know, perhaps you have said something, and as soon as those words escaped your lips, you clamp your hands over them and wish you could take them back. And you are actually sometimes dumbfounded in disbelief that you could say such hurtful or such misleading things. Now, the same idea can be applied to all sorts of sin. Uh, you know, just pick a commandment, right? But what, what if there was actually a do-over concerning more than just your thoughts and your actions? What if there was a way to undo and do the right thing? What if there were a do-over concerning your very nature, that which is the root of your sins? the root of your regrets. That is what we are reading about today. It is God's great do-over for man in Jesus Christ. In Genesis 3, our Old Testament reading today, we, we read of the fall, that capital F fall that we talk about all the time, when Adam and Eve succumbed to temptation and they sinned. And as we read it, they did so all too easily. But immediately, there was regret. And God does not wait long as he follows up then with a promise, a promise of a Savior. And in the Gospel reading, we see Jesus going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the devil in what I am calling creation's do-over where the Son of Man resists temptation and he does what Adam could not. He ushers in a new age of obedience, a life that does not have regret. And St. Paul highlights the, the universal nature of sin for all children of Adam, right, in his epistle reading today. For it is in Adam that all die, accompanied, though, with all of those regrets of sin and a desire, once again, for a means of doing it over. But he follows up then also with that universal nature of Christ's obedience, that which fulfills the promise and provides the free gift to as many as who will believe. And here, when I say universal, I mean that it applies to everybody. For all, as descendants of Adam, are sinners and die on account of sin. And that universal grace of God is for all mankind, for all who believe. This past week, I was studying Hosea 1 as I, I did a, a Bible study with a, a former pastor in, in Connecticut, but he hosts a, a, stage, a, a program on KFUO radio. And in that early 8th century BC, when Hosea had, had his ministry, the setting in Israel was, was quite fantastic. A very flourished life. Their, their power of their extent they enjoyed. Was that the nation was at its apex, we might say, at its pinnacle, right? It was a very good time to be an Israelite, the best time since Solomon's reign. But along with that wealth, with, along with all of that prosperity, came great apostasy. That means that they neglected their faith, they neglected their God, they just followed after other gods. It was not that they had an apathy towards religion. They 
you know, just like in our day. It's not that anybody's truly without religion. They just reject the one true God. It was that they desired the religions of their own making. And they re rejected the religion of Yahweh and that had been handed down to them, that had been given over to them by his word. A religion that had been sustained by their forebears in a wilderness wandering for 40 years. Adam, too, had his every physical and, and, and possible need that he could imagine supplied for him. Imagine living in the Garden of Eden. He lived in the richest of lands where everything flourished, you know, not even a thorn or a thistle to be seen. He had no want for anything. He was given a religion that centered on the word of God. This is what you have. And what he would, that, a word that would assure his sonship and his fellowship, his communion with God. Yet with all the good that he enjoyed, he wanted something more, something different. He wanted to achieve and not receive. He wanted to make his mark and attain equality with God by forging his own path. Now, as we know, it was a path that had led to sin for all and to death as a consequence for that sin. But when we look at Jesus, it's not a garden place. It's not a, a, a bountiful or a flourishing place in which he is led, where the Spirit takes him. No, the Spirit leads him to a, a desert place, a place unlike the garden, a place of drought and famine, a place where man has great and many needs, an inhospitable place. And Jesus was challenged with the same question as Adam. Are you truly God's son? What kind of God is Yahweh that he would withhold from you anything? That he would withhold you from you the very things that your heart desires, even those things that your body needs. And Jesus was given a religion of the word upon which he did depend, by which he did worship God, a word in which to find fellowship with his Father. In this word, Jesus did dwell as he went over it again and again, reminding himself of God's provision, even as he used it to refute the devil. For man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Jesus didn't just know the word. Jesus believed the word of God. He believed, despite everything that was happening to him, despite everything that the, the naked eye would see, he knew and believed that he was and is God's son. Even if something is withheld from him for a time. So where Adam failed to listen to God's word, Jesus succeeded. Where Adam trusted his gut, Jesus trusted the scriptures. Where Adam pursued glory, Jesus accepted his cross. Where Adam's feasting brought death, Jesus' fasting brought life. God has provided a great do-over that we might be found as a part of a new creation. Where Adam failed to trust, and as we have seen through the history of God's people, where they too have failed again and again to trust God, we see that Jesus does what no one else could do. He does trust his Father. He does trust the word that was given to him in the scriptures. 
that which was spoken to him and uh, spoken to him and about him, despite his circumstances and despite the grief that would lay ahead. Beyond just confessing that this is so, we should recognize our own tendency towards self-satisfaction. That we sidestep God's will for us and, and what he has given us. And, and, and try to pursue after the things that perhaps he has not given to us. We strive to feed ourselves from our own labor and to supply our needs by our own achievements. We reach out and we grasp hold of that which God has forbidden so that we might feel satisfied in some, I'll say, bizarre or even sometimes macabre manner, just so that we can feel good for the moment. We need confess our likeness to our father Adam and our wretched rebellion to God's word. We should recognize our own desire to have God continually prove himself to us, that somehow we would believe him if he would only do X or would only do Y on our behalf. If God could mend my broken relationship, if he could heal my chronic disease, if, if he would only give my church a revival, then I would know for sure that he is with me and protecting me. We need confess our distrust and our challenge of God by putting him to the test, even as Adam did. We should recognize our utmost want of a foreign religion, one that gives us glory upon glory, how we want so badly to have a God that makes us feel good, that satisfies our urges and validates our desires, how we readily worship the God that is created in our own minds and so easily bend his words to comply with our imaginations. We need confess our Adamic, that is our Adam-like urge to supplant the religion and the worship of the one true God with our own religion and our worship of the idol of our own creation. These things, along with the inherited sin from Adam, make us unworthy of God. As Adam failed to live as God's son, so has each of us failed to, to live as God's children. But by Christ's obedience, he does provide for a progeny, a progeny in the line of a faithful son himself. Jesus does what Adam could not. He does what none of us is capable of doing. He hears God's word and he obeys. He believes. He lives in harmony and in fellowship with the Father, even in this fallen world, by trusting and believing despite deprivation and rigorous temptation. Through his obedience, through his demonstrated righteousness, he provides righteousness to the sinner. His obedience to God's word and his faithfulness to the Father become, becomes the obedience and the faithfulness for Adam. And thus, for every one of his descendants, through faith. It is not only this active obedience, the things that Jesus actively does in resisting temptation and not sinning, that, that, that uh, his obedience to God's word here, that he does over. As Adam stood idly by and would not step between the serpent and his wife, as he failed to be her savior, Jesus hesitates not a moment, but he takes on temptation and the devil directly. As Adam failed to die for his bride, Jesus gladly and willingly dies for his church. 
Jesus raises mankind from the ash heap of Adam's failure to the resurrected life in his victory over the devil. I mean, our, our first hymn, you know, you're very familiar with um, A Mighty Fortress, but in that third stanza, it is most explicit that the devil just, he's like a dog with bark and no bite. He is defeated. And that's what we trust him. Along with him, then, all temptation has been overcome, and even death. We see in today's gospel a champion who does not seek his own provision, does not glory in a religion of his own de uh, devising, but instead one who depends upon God's every work, who trusts and who does not tempt God and who clings to the worship that is set forth in the scripture. We see in this wilderness temptation of Jesus, our champion, who has achieved the great do-over, that we might know the blessed love of God, that we might enjoy the honor, the true honor, of being God's children. In the name of Jesus. In our prayers today, I'm, I'm going to add one name that's not uh, included in the prayer list, and that's Kim uh, Slinninger. She's a deaconess in uh, Bangor, Maine, and uh, she is, I don't know, she was hospitalized for the last couple of weeks, and, and she's doing some tests this week, but um, it has the possibility of being uh, very serious for her. So as I was saying during our Bible class this morning, when we pray for all of those in our in our prayer lists, um, especially those that, let's say, suffer under some malady or, or disease or sickness. Well, we, in our minds, we often think that we're praying, and we do, for healing. Our first and our foremost prayer should be for, for their provision in faith. That as Jesus endured in the wilderness, that in this wilderness, all too would endure in faith. Always trusting that whether we are healed now or not, that God is always with us and that our healing is complete in the resurrection. So with that, I invite you to stand with me as we pray for all people and uh, all God's people according to their needs and for all others as necessary. O oh Lord, you sought Adam and Eve in the garden, and you called them to repentance. Seek us when we wander from your holy word, and give us contrite hearts to confess our sins and receive the forgiveness and restoration that you promise. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father in heaven, your son trampled the serpent underfoot and freed us from sin and death by his own death on the cross. Protect and preserve all who, who are called to preach Christ and Him crucified, especially for Matthew and Robert in these latter days. Bless, O oh Lord, uh, the, the mission endeavor of this congregation as the, the Czech mission team meets today. Prepare them for this opportunity, and, and we pray that it would flourish under your will. Command your angels to guard all in their ways and to bear them up, for the sake of Jesus, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. O Lord, you created the home as the place where we are brought up in the ways of truth and goodness and mercy. Sustain parents in their sacred charge and grant that our homes would be places of confession and forgiveness of sins. May your spirit teach all in our homes to wait upon you and your word, Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, you have established earthly authorities to punish evil and praise those who do good. Grant our rulers humble hearts to resist the allure of power and to worship you alone, that their every action would be for peace. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. 
Almighty God, your Son was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to suffer temptation for our sake. Strengthen us when we are tempted, and teach us to rely upon your word as our defense and our strength. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Almighty God, send your holy angels to protect and keep us in your ways, that no evil may befall us. Graciously behold the needy, the sick, and the troubled. Especially we pray for Edward, Jean, Elder, Darlene, Sandra, and Kim, for all others upon our prayer list and all for whom you have given us to pray. Satisfy us with a long life of faithfulness and show us your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Almighty God, you covered the shame of our first parents with animal skins and thereby foreshadowed the perfect sacrifice of the shedding of your son's blood by which we are cleansed and clothed. Give us the garments of repentance and faith that we may receive your Son's body and blood for the forgiveness of all our sins. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you have given us a refuge from the world in the body of Christ. Protect us from all evils of both body and soul, that we would find rest in this life and eternal rest in your heavenly embrace. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you.
commentary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many, that with cleansed hearts we might be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal Feast in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us fully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship, with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Christ, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you all always. Amen. The Lord Savior Jesus Christ will strengthen and 
preserve our whole body and soul unto life everlasting. We part in peace. to the table of the Lord. Jesus Christ will strengthen and preserve you both body and soul unto life everlasting. Depart in peace.
body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, will strengthen and preserve you, both body and soul, unto life everlasting. Depart in peace.
Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary kiss. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. about a Bible study offered on the book of Revelation, and that link does not work. I don't have control over that link, um, but if you show, did you figure it out? Um, no, but they're fixing it, and probably will be back on Okay, so, you know, if you're interested in that and the link doesn't work on Monday, you know, maybe try Tuesday or something like that. Um, you still have plenty of time to register. Um, Trying to think, I don't believe there's any other announcements. Um, if anybody wishes to shovel my drive today, you're more than welcome to. <laughs> but uh, I'm sure you'll be busy with your own. God's blessings.